What's up guys, just pop it in before the video starts to let you know to like, comment, and subscribe. It all helps out, I'm really trying to grow the channel, and that's about all I can do as I'm getting zero help from the algorithm gods. Enjoy. Pull the string! Pull the string! Quentin Tarantino made the 90s his own personal playground. And perhaps one of the greatest things Tarantino did was spread his love of film in a decade where film wasn't necessarily easy to come by. Personally, it was directly because of Tarantino that I was exposed to certain types of foreign cinema that I probably never would have seen. Or, I don't know, maybe I would have, because when I was a kid I would seek out that stuff. But still, films like Chungking Express and Sonatine were some of my first viewings from the area, and it was when Tarantino decided to start Rolling Thunder Pictures, you know, to shed light on some of his favorite genre films, that I became hip to Asian cinema, etc., as well as exploitation in general. As the films he chose to release here were films like Detroit 9000 and Switchblade Sisters, stuff that really spoke to my young self. With Rolling Thunder Pictures, Tarantino released on VHS a series of his favorite films, all with an intro and outro with the man himself. It was really cool, like, you kinda got to hang out with them and hear about the movie. And I would seek out these VHS tapes at my local mom and pop shops, and these days, they make for pretty rare DVDs. But just before taking on this new venture, Tarantino was doing what he loved best, watching movies. And it was at a film festival during a block of student films where a hungry Tarantino was in attendance. Just about to get up and leave to find the nearest diner after the ending of every underwhelming student film. That is until a particular short film about a serial killer and a young woman's obsession with him caught Tarantino's eye. So cut to the Rolling Thunder Pictures releases, where Tarantino would release his personal favorite grindhouse, horror, Asian, and exploitation films. He also lent his name and executive produced a feature-length version of the short student film he saw that day. And what resulted was one of the most uniquely underrated low-budgeted crime thrillers of the era, Curdled. Curdled tells the tale of Gabriella, a Colombian immigrant who has a young girl witnessed a gruesome scene and becomes infatuated with murder over the years. Which kind of makes her a weirdo. <laughs> you know, she keeps close watch on the news when a notorious serial killer known as the Blue Blood Killer is on the loose in L.A., and eventually seeks out a job at a crime scene cleanup crew to get closer to the Blue Blood Killer's crime scenes. Problem is, she gets a little too close. Somewhere in the city, a serial murderer is about to strike again. Tonight, we profiled the reign of terror of Miami's Blue Blood Killer. But there's one woman in town who knows more about the killer than anyone else. Why don't you show me what you know? The first time was here. Yes, Cameron in Curdle. Gabriella is played amazingly by Angela Jones, who previously appeared as the cab driver in Pulp Fiction, a character I think was clearly inspired by the short film Curdle, as by this time Tarantino had already seen it. In a Pulp Fiction, she plays Esmeralda Villalobos, a young taxi driver seemingly obsessed with death. But you know, for being an oddball character, she is endlessly likable here. And I gotta say, this is definitely William Baldwin's best role to date. I mean, the dude really seems like a psycho serial killer here and demands the screen. And when tied with the slapstick, you know, and musical infusion of the film, it all makes for a real campy good time that always takes itself seriously. Curdled makes for an engaging suspense thriller that never really goes where you think it will. You know, I recommend it along with films like Four Rooms and even From Dusk Till Dawn for a risque triple feature this Halloween season. And in the overall subgenre of serial killer thrillers, I mean, Curdle is among the best of the bunch. And damn, not enough can be said about William Baldwin here, seriously. Tarantino really did a good deed here getting the film made and prompting it under his label. And you know, at the time, it may have made more sense for Robert Rodriguez to take the reins considering, you know, the heavy ethnic elements in the script and the use of music overall in Curdled. That's all just right up Rodriguez's alley. But still, Tarantino did include one very cool little scene for us fans that solidifies Curdled as part of the Tarantino-verse by directly connecting Robert Rodriguez's film From Dusk Till Dawn 
which of course was written by Tarantino. We went to Texas to bring you the up-to-the-minute story of Steph and Richard Gecko, the bank-robbing brothers who killed, kidnapped, and ripped their way across Missouri and Texas, only to vanish seemingly into thin air. So as far as the little, you know, extended universe of Tarantino movies, I think this one takes the cake. I sincerely hope if you haven't seen this film, you seek it out. As the rest of us have already seen, you know, rest assured, the film absolutely sticks its landing. I highly recommend Curdled for anybody who's into oddball horror, as Curdled is indeed one of the most unique takes on the suspense, horror, serial killer, obsession, musically infused, whimsical, demented genre of films that Curdled belongs in. As forgotten as the film is, you know, there is a stacked DVD out there, price to own, that is worth the buy if you could find it. I'd like to hear what you guys think of the film. Please like, comment, and subscribe, guys. We are smack dab in the middle of Stancho Ween. We got plenty of spooky stuff coming. I will see you guys soon.